Hey guys, coming at you with low energy today um, in Japan. Uh, it's been a long day and a long week and a stressful week um, for purely just the fact that it's been a long week and I've taught a lot of lessons and it's been a couple of late nights um, mostly because I've been, you know, misbehaving and, and watching too much Netflix um, and that kind of thing. And uh, as a lot of you guys know, Netflix gets in the way if you're sleeping, but it's worth it because some of the shows are so good. Um, especially, I, I'm really enjoying this Netflix show called Rain right now, which I think is supposed to be Dutch. Oh man, if it's not Dutch, I might be in trouble. But I, you know, it's really good. <laughs> I've been watching it a lot recently, and then my nights have been a little bit late because of it. So that, on top of working, equals tired. So I'm coming out with low energy today. But what I want to get across today and talk about a little bit is the difference between teaching adults and teaching kids. So a lot of you guys who are watching this video have plans of coming to Japan. You want to come to Japan and probably how you're going to do that is come and teach in Japan, whether that be kids or adults. And there's a couple key differences and I just want to hit those real quick with you guys so maybe you can better make your decision uh, on what you want to do when you come here. Do you want to focus on teaching kids classes? Do you want to f focus on teaching adults? Or do you want to blend of the two? And so, in my experience, having worked on the JET program last year, my cat is like under here, and every time he wants to come out, he wants to be a bad boy. And so I'm gonna like kind of keep him here, and so he's not making a bunch of noise, because he always does when I film a video. So if you see me like kind of doing this kind of thing, it's because I'm keeping him in here, so he doesn't get away, okay? I love you though, no, no. You're a good boy, you're just a butthead when I'm filming. Anyway, so um, let's talk about the key distinctions between those things. So when it comes to teaching kids, you need to focus on a couple things, which is one, high engagement, um, probably being the most important. What I mean by high engagement is you as the teacher, you need to be ready to be the focus of attention, to guide the attention of the classroom, and to make it engaging because the students aren't there willingly, at least not most of the time. They're there because their parents made them do it, they're there because their school's making them do it, they're not there because they have any desire to learn English and they probably don't have any desire to learn English, learn English, which means that the only reason that they're going to enjoy themselves is because they have fun playing with you. And we're talking about kids who are like 10 and under. Because when they're 13, 14, um, they can talk, they can study, they know what it's like to study, they know what it means to study, they've been in school long enough. But if they're really little, they just want to play. And so the key to get them to understand the information you're giving them and to engage with you and learn the lesson the right way is to make it fun and engaging. And that means rotating through games quickly and making it fun and something that they can all get involved in. So playing a lot of games where they're up and moving, playing a lot of games that involve them yelling or screaming or holding something, things that are tactile, playing with a ball, playing with dice, depending on their age, they don't choke on anything, um, and doing that sort of thing. Working with a book, working with a textbook, having them write things down over and over again may or may not work depending on the group of kids, but I found the most reliable way to get them to engage with you, particularly if they're really young, is to be the source of the entertainment. So if you're fun, if you're being loud, if you're doing hand gestures and getting in their face and going for high fives and switching things up and using weird voices, they'll pay attention to you, they'll retain it, and they'll want to come back and their parents will be happy. Um, the one thing you probably can't get across in most of these young classes is the context of the language. So if you're trying to teach a lesson like dry your face, wash your hands, brush your teeth, you can mime, you can mimic it, you can show them pictures, but they probably won't make the connection because they're lacking the this in English means this in Japanese. Um, and so you'll need to give it to the parents a little bit, particularly if you're working in an Ikaiwa where there's no backup Japanese teacher. You'll need to give it to the parents, say this is what we went over, this is what they struggled with, practice at home, explain to them what it means in Japanese. I can't do that, I'm the English teacher, I speak English, I can't tell them what it is in Japanese. Um, but if you're teaching at an elementary school or a middle school, like on the JET program, you have a backup teacher who'll explain the grammar, you should be good to go. But you want to focus mostly on the engagement and not so much necessarily the, the nitty gritty grammar of each lesson, at least not in my experience. Now when you're teaching adults, it's different. When you're teaching adults, you want to teach them the grammar. Of course you want to be engaging with them too, but mostly that means being friendly, smiling, being open, being patient, and letting them do as much talking as possible. Um, and covering for them when they can't speak. And so what this means is you do the lessons they want to do. Maybe they want to study for a test, something like TOEIC if you're familiar with TOEIC or TOEFL, taking an English speaking or writing test. That's what a lot of businesses want their, their uh, 
or workers to do um, is to study for a test and pass it and have English ability. And if that's what they're doing, then that's what you want to practice with them. Very basic, practice with a textbook, explain to them the grammar points, this sort of thing. Um, and try to make it fun for them too so that they want to come back. But primarily if you're teaching them and they're understanding it and they're walking away saying, hey, I learned something new, I spent my money doing the right thing today, um, you know, they should enjoy it and they should come back and, and do more of that with you. Um, the other thing for adults, I would say, primarily with adults anyway, is that being an English teacher, you know, first and foremost, you're teaching the language, but second of all, you're forming relationships with your students. With kids, you don't really form relationships in the same way. You're the funny teacher, you're the, the, you're the guy that they play with for 45 minutes an hour, you know, every Sunday when you come in for a class, and they go don't think about you, you know, for the rest of the week. But when you're teaching adults, they do think about you, they bring you presents, they write you notes when they're going to be gone for a long time, they, they thank you for things, they remember things that you tell them, they come back with funny stories, they listen to movie recommendations. You're a lot more than just their teacher, you become a friend. And unfortunately, it feels weird, it's a friend, a friendship that's based around whether or not they're going to pay to come back for more English lessons. I kind of wish it wasn't like that. Um, but when you're teaching them, when you're talking to them, you want to be you know, friendly, you want to be engaging with them, you want to have stories to tell them about, you want to ask them stories to share, and you want to show that you're interested in who they are beyond just being an English student. And so when you're teaching these lessons and you're drilling the grammar with them, you're drilling the vocab, you always want to make sure that it's personalized to some degree, um, that you're asking them all the things you should ask people to be friendly, ask them about their family, their kids, their hobbies, what they're doing this weekend, all of these things to stay engaging. Um, and having this conversation with them, even at the most basic level, even if they don't speak any English when they come in to see you, even if it's very much you're just following the textbook until they get basic grammar and vocabulary down so they can understand you, if you're using your paper and your resources the right way, you can still be fun and engaging and teach them things, um, even if they have almost zero in terms of knowledge. So, for example, I was teaching this one student, he came in, he was a level 5 student at NOVA, which means, you know, the, the lowest level you can be if you're not a child. Um, and he came in with no English experience outside of maybe his, his junior high school days. And so it was very basic. And so I talked to him a little bit, I got a sense of what he could understand and what he couldn't understand. I used very simple words, and then I engaged with him. Um, by talking about pop culture. So I, I brought up a couple of famous people in Japan's name, a couple of famous people who are international. When he would recognize it, I'd say their movies or their music. I'd say, do you like it? He can understand that. We just had a big 30 minute conversation revolving around, do you like? And then what was ever in the grammar lesson for that day. So we could walk aw away from that class saying, I learned something um, in the grammar. I remember this stuff that I like this, I like that. Um, and I can use it in my day to day and he felt like that was a good lesson. Now I see him every single week um, and he's progressed really quickly. So you want to remember those two things um, in particular, um, which I guess just to rephrase is with kids, the relationships and stuff. My cat, come on, no way you're going to go run away and be crazy. With kids, you want to just be as engaging as possible, as high energy as possible um, and make yourself the center of attention um, with adults. You want them to be the center of attention. You want to make sure you're asking them questions and of course teach them the grammar that they're there to learn for the day or the vocab or whatever it might be. So you wanna be you know, fulfilling both of those roles. So I hope that may helped some of you guys make a decision with, um, man, my cat, what a booty. I hope that helped you guys make a little bit of a decision whether or not you wanna teach English to adults or to kids. Um, if you know what you wanna do when you come to Japan, let me know what, what you wanna do. Um, if you have any questions about teaching adults for teaching kids, uh, let me know what those questions might be. And guys, thanks again. Thanks for always for watching. Sorry this video got a little bit long. I was trying to talk fast, but it got a little bit long. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully my cat won't be such a butthead. Um, and thanks for watching, as always. See you guys.